This is Diana getting her skin prick test. She was one and a half. It was such a bad experience. But it's a panic. Look for the inhaler. Put it on her face. Have the phone at my ears ringing while ambulance. Texting my family, telling them what was going on. Panic, 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 panic. All around. I'm on the phone with one NHS 111. They're asking me all of these questions. How many breaths is she taking in how many seconds? I'm like, I don't know. A lot. A lot. Because <laughs> So, hi, welcome to my channel. <laughs> my name is Petro, Petro. And yeah, my name is Petro. My channel is Petro.Trisha. I am a mother of two children. My eldest is away at uni and I live with my youngest, Diana. She is, I nearly said six, she's seven. Diana has allergies. Diana has asthma, Diana has eczema, and Diana has allergies. Some are unconfirmed. So I know for sure that she's allergic to peanut, and I think it was dust and pollen when she did the test. And the skin prick test came about from when it, she was about nine months old and we were out and I was eating a biscuit and you know you just feed your baby a little bit of the and I was chatting at the same time and she was in my hand and I just gave her a little bit without even thinking because at that time I knew that the recommended because I read a lot so when I was pregnant and when she was younger I read a lot that certain things that like foods that are high um highly allergic or high in allergen you shouldn't give to babies until a certain age. And I knew that at that age, it was too soon. But after I gave her some and I was chatting, chatting to somebody and I stopped and thought, and I think there's peanut in this. Now I know that there is allergies. There are allergies in my family. So I did, it did cross my mind for a little bit. And I watched her and she seemed fine. When we went home, by the time we got home, she's, she had done soiled her nappy a few times, her pampers. A few times and my eldest daughter my eyes are burning and my eldest daughter said mom that's strange diana's pulled quite a lot and i'm like no nah, she's just teething it's fine and i was changing her at one point and when i looked at her skin it looked red looked at her face lips big nose big jaws big ears big the ears were just swe swelling up then and she was uncomfortable and crying and i started to panic Jumped in my car. I didn't call the ambulance. Jumped in my car. Drove up to the, the hospital because it's not far from where we were living. And by the time we got to the hospital, all of the swellings had multiplied. They got even bigger. By this point, she was crying. When I went in, they rushed her in and da 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 da. And they gave her um, steroid medicine and everything. And I think injection. All of the whole works. Um. So that's how I found out that she was allergic. And then a few months later, they had, after that, they booked her in, given her an appointment to do a skin prick test. Now, the skin prick test is horrible for, for a child. They put little pins, like pricked her skin, down beside her spine, going down. I've got video evidence going down her back and the whole time she was wriggling, 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 wriggling and crying and then they put like oils and they're trying to label it label it like they write next to each prick what it is I think it was either with a sticker tape or something and then they put that oil so like the first one they put peanuts the second one they put something else the third one they put something else so they're dripping little bits of oils to see which ones will react to the allergen um, because she wriggled so much they said that it was difficult to get a conclusive test for all of the pricks but they know for sure that the first two are definite so I think the first two or three they knew for sure but the other ones going down they couldn't tell 
So exactly what she's allergic to, I don't know everything. And even in that test, they wouldn't have been able to prove everything. On Boxing Day, December, I was at my aunt's and Diana had macaroni and cheese. I didn't give her any rice and peas because she's not particular for rice and peas, especially after once her jaws swell up once and I thought it was, I suspected maybe coconut. Um, I wasn't sure. I And then I even thought maybe mustard, but she loves macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese was there. She had some of that. And on the side of her plate, she had some chicken. The chicken was like fried, like chicken breast pieces, fried crispy. And I heard that there was mustard on the chicken. When I did, when she had the allergy response before, I thought maybe it was mustard because the cheese sauce that I had bought pre at that time had mustard in it, and it was the only thing I could, I could um think that is the first time she's having it. So I only gave her a period, and I was at my aunt's house. I didn't have her epipen. I didn't have any medicine, <laughs> and I know that she's allergic. But my auntie is a child by that and she had period in her cupboard, thankfully, and she gave Diana some. And by the time we left, the lip had gone down a bit and by the following day, it was totally gone. So I don't think whatever she had, I don't think she had a lot of it. Now, let me just preview Diana's medicine. You're going to be helping me to sort this out, by the way. So at the side here, standing up, and I'm going to show each thing individually. A lot of them need sorting out and I need to put them in one place because sometimes I have some in my room, some in Diana's room, some in this bag because we've traveled somewhere, some in this bag, some in that bag. So one of my jobs that I wanted to do was to sort out Diana's medicine. And I said, it's quite boring. So to make sure I definitely do it, let's sort it out on camera. So I'm just going to say what each thing is. And I'd like tips if anybody has children with allergies or has allergies themselves what do you take what do you recommend diana's skin is worse when it's really really hot or really really cold in the uk funny enough we went to jamaica last year easter diana did not have a blister diana did not get any sort of reaction in Jamaica, not even the mosquitoes did not affect Diana's skin. I don't think Diana got one mosquito bite in Jamaica. And that's something. And I was prepared for it. I had all of these creams. I went to the doctor. I said, I'm traveling to Jamaica. Can I get everything? So if her skin breaks out, because in the summer when we have really hot days, her feet breaks out in water blisters and they pop and when they pop they, they ooze liquid and when they ooze liquid that they dry up and they turn crusty and then their feet just get dry and you have to moisturize and it hurts and all of that and it happens to her fingers as well Now, the fingers happen more regularly. Sometimes it's calm, sometimes it's not. When it wasn't so cold, like in December, it wasn't too bad. It was still every day, every morning, every evening, you had to treat it. And mostly just by moisturizing um, at those times or just a little bit every now and again, a little bit of steroid cream every now and again. But... Um, I've noticed recently in the last couple of weeks, it's got really, really cold and her fingers have started to blister. But it wasn't too bad. I'm going to show a picture of what it looks like today. So Saturday, on Saturday night, we said, I said, oh, Diana, let's make a smoothie. Let's make some smoothies. I made hers first because I put peanuts in mine. When I was having mine, she was going to bed. I made hers first and I used vegan ice cream thinking it's not dairy. Sunday morning, Diana's skipping about. Yeah, we're going to Claire's. Mom's bringing me to Claire's because she wanted to go to Claire's to spend her own money. And when I looked at her, skipping, I was like, Diana, your jaw them fat. Your jaw. It wasn't both. It was just one. And one of her eyes were puffy. 
And I said, and she was shot then. And um, I gave her medicine, gave her um, Puritan. I don't have my Puritan here, actually. I don't have the Puritan here. That's one of the things that's missing, actually. Gave her Puritan all day. I went out and bought... Oh, I don't have Puritan, but I, this is the same as Puritan. This is um, liquid cetirizine, which she has. She takes for during the spring. She gets hay fever. And she, had to, she has to take this every day as long as the pollen count is high or even when the pollen count isn't high, just in case the following day is high. She is constantly drugged up on this during the spring because she gets congested. That triggers her hay fever. She coughs a lot. So for the whole spring and summer, Diana is prescribed these. I bought this one on Sunday because I'd run out of the one that was prescribed because in December she did wasn't needing it. She wasn't, I wasn't giving it to her that much. So she has this. Anyways, I gave her that because that treats the allergies as well. The um skin and everything, like if she's if she's reacted to some food or something. Anyways, we went out, came back on Sunday. She had a little bit of a puffy jaw, took her to the chemist, but to the chemist about the medicines and stuff. Monday morning, I'm ready for work, get to waking up Diana, do our normal, regular morning routine of creaming her skin, all of this. I noticed she had some rash on her shoulder, which like she's been scratching over the weekend. And both jaws now swell up fat. Eyes, pff, fat. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, oh no, I need to take her to the doctor. She can't go to school like this. And obviously the medicine I gave her yesterday has not worked. And the only thing I can suspect must be the vegan ice cream. Because on Sunday, I checked the pack and it said it had soy in it. Only thing could have been the culprit. Anyways, we got an appointment for 9 o'clock at the hospital. We got through, I think, like after 10. Then we had to go to the chemist to fill the prescription. Went to the chemist. The chemist said the doctor did the prescription wrong. I had to take it back to the hospital. Again, we had to wait to get through and all of this. By the time we got back home, it was like after 12 o'clock. So we didn't bother going to school or work. So let's look at Diana's. So, all right. So let's go back now. So after we went to the, came home and everything, they prescribed, I haven't got it here. Let me run and get it. Here is the Puritan, which is literally finished, which I gave her on Sunday. At the hospital, they prescribed this. So this is oral steroid, which she is to take for three days. And it's a lot, it's 20 mils every day. And it's four of these, four or five mil um, little things in here. Four of these that she used to take over three days. And that's the last dose that she took one Monday morning. Today's Tuesday. And I'm going to give her the last tomorrow morning. Anyways, wake up now. Um, this morning looked at diana's fingers remember yesterday morning was the first time she took this no yesterday when we got it was the first time she took it and then this morning looked at diana's fingers which weren't that bad i'm telling you this morning diana said mommy look at my finger the finger swell up full of water blisters it's like oh my goodness i'm like it must be the oral steroid working in our body and it's made the, the fingers worse than they were i spoke to diana's teacher at school who she has the same condition the eczema and the water blisters that come up and she said yep that happened to her she had a breakout they gave her the oral steroids and it caused more she she wore the gloves and the gloves the water blisters came out and she couldn't even take the gloves off because the water blisters were so bad. Like when she woke up, they were everywhere on her fingers. Diana's got these gloves that I bought on Amazon. She's got a pair on now, which I'm going to insert the video. Because I took a picture or a video of tonight when I was putting those on her hands. 
she's had these for years i have to wash them all the time um so that's one finger don can you show your whole hand please mm -hmm. turn your hand around okay and here as well, we need to put some here. Stretch your legs out and see your knees and stuff. Look, at the moment, the knees are quite smooth. Sometimes they get really rough. All of these spots are eczema. Right, next hand. Now, this hand, these fingers been like this for a while. But yesterday, the steroid, after she took this, they were getting better. They didn't have these, their fresh bumps on them. And I think since she took the oral steroid yesterday morning, they got really bad. So I'm just going to be using, I actually went to the dermatologist today. And this was prescribed for, um, to take, to use. But it burns, so I'm going to have to put Vaseline on first, the dermatologist said. Then the cream, and then the gloves quickly. And she's going to sleep with it. And if I do that for a while, she said it will definitely heal completely. But I have to stick to stick to it this way stick to fixing it and i've got she's got wet traps so diana's skin can get really bad in places at the moment her arms and legs you can see all the scarring from years of when the eczema has been triggered and she's had like because she gets it in places like here 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 fingers between her legs under her bottom tummy neck where what did i miss anywhere <laughs> under her armpits all over toes feet um she when it's bad like around her limbs i've had these before and i've put these on her fingers and it really helps what i do what helps is if i get the steroid cream and the wrap so put the steroid cream first on her fingers and the wrap and wrap it round and then and when I'm going to show you and then you have to um, put the gloves on. Now to do that, this is what the wrap is like, the wet wrap. It's a whole routine, you know, it's a whole routine. When Diana's skin is bad, this takes half an hour or more. This is the wet wrap. It's in a big roll. And it's... um. Oh, let's see. It's in a big roll. I don't want to make my hands too messy, but I want to show. So it's in a big reel. So it, it, to do her fingers, I can't just wrap her hands like that. You have to do each finger. So I have to cut this. It's so messy. It goes everywhere. Look, I can't find the end where it starts from. But you have to unroll that. Cut it in little pieces for her fingers. Wrap the finger. Luckily, because it's so wet, it's like a paste. Kind of like a cast before the cast dries. And you, um, oh, this one wasn't in the box. Wrap each thing individual finger. And that's after putting the medicine on. And then putting the gloves over the hands. I tell you, when I got to dry my hands on these gloves and then wash them. Because she's got a pair on now anyway. Oh, here's a box of tissues. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's a whole palaver. When her limbs are bad, like when I have to do her arms, her elbows under her arms, her legs, to wrap this big white paste after putting all the medication on it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. And then put long sleeve pyjamas on. Like even today the dermatologist was telling me that the they sell some long sleeve vests. And the doctors, the, the doctor can put it on prescription. And they can also put gloves on prescription. So she said she's going to ask, recommend, write a, to the doctor and ask him to put some gloves and some vests on it for Diana. Hopefully she can get some nice new gloves. I don't know what the prescribed ones would be like. But that would be good. So we have to wrap her up, wrap her up, wrap her up. So that's the skin. I don't know what triggers the skin. I don't know what triggers the skin. I know weather tr triggers the skin. Extreme weathers. 
extreme heat but saying that jamaica was hot so it's not just it's not moist heat it's the cold dry dry air in the uk the where even when it's cold or not cold even in the summer it's dry it's not humid like jamaica i think when it's humid it's probably not so bad and i don't know if the water plays a part because and diana's skin was so good when we're at the airport diana said mommy maybe we should stay because my skin is so nice diana's skin pretty face pretty at jamaica everything anyways let me tell a little story about some of these medications so these steroids doctors don't even want to prescribe them one year one summer diana had a breakout i'm at it off a curse I had to write an email, cost them, tell them that they're failing children because the people refused to give me the steroid cream. And it's the only thing that would make Diana's condition better. I had to curse for them to give me. So you see, when I get them and them soon finish, me keep them. Because if you grow Jamaica, you know how to get in tube. Because when toothpaste finish and you don't have any more in the house, and you don't have shop near, you don't have money to buy it, you cut it and you dig it out. So these will not be thrown away anytime soon. I keep them. I was given this when I went to the hospital. The doctor at the hospital prescribed this. And the dermat. Another piece. Yesterday, Monday, yep, when I came home from the hospital, when I was at the hospital, the hospital said, also contact the, contact the dermatologist and try to get an appointment for her fingers because even though she went to the hospital for the swelling of her jaws the do i showed the doctor at the hospital her skin as well because the whole allergies and the skin is connected because even this morning on this where her jaws were puffy the skin on her jaws are red inflamed like today like rashy um she said the steroid oral steroid would help her skin as well but yeah she prescribed this and she said to contact the dermatologist i rang them yesterday and she said she could have given me an, an appointment for the for the, today so she said she's gonna try she called me back i had to send her an email with some pictures she rang me back and she said she's got an appointment for tuesday at 10 55 so luckily diana goes to the school where i work so we left school at break time and went to the appointment so that doctor is going to give me another steroid cream which i'm going to use sparingly because they have to last so these are all the same diana has got epipens once i went to to the I've, I've had to ring ambulance before for diana when she's had like a coughing fit and then it wouldn't stop and then she couldn't breathe and then i panicked and then i rang the and the ambulance came so I had to take her to the hospital. So Diana has EpiPens. <laughs> Look at it. <gasps> Some of them are expired, but you still have to have them. So I need to go through and see which ones are expired and get rid of. So I'm going to be doing this either in this video or just after the video ends. Um, I know how to use the EpiPen. I've been trained to use the EpiPen. When you use, once I went to the hospital and with Diana and they gave me a prescription, it was a white paper prescription and I didn't know it had to be filled at the hospital. So I left, went to my regular chemist. When I got there, they told me that this prescription can only be filled at the hospital. So I was like, oh my goodness. So I had to go, I said, I don't want to go back to the hospital. How much would it be to pay for it? He said, um, 50 pounds. You said 50 pounds for one and they recommend that you have two because if you use one and in half an hour you don't see any improvement if they look like there's still rapid swelling and anaphylactic shock happening then give a second one so they recommend that you have two 100 pound for something that she might not even use so i um I didn't buy it. I told him to put it on on the prescription to contact the GP and ask them to send the send it to the to the surgery and they did. So right here, this is 200 pounds, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, 300 pounds. This 
but I also have to have two at her school, which I do. This expired 2023. Um, what month? February. March. So I said already at the beginning of this video that one of the things I'm doing on this is sorting out all of these medicines and make sure they're all in one place. October 2023. So just a few months ago. To make sure that they are all in one place and easy to find. And I can't have the expired one because if I need to give her the EpiPen in a hurry, it needs to be in date. This one is July 2024. So that's good to keep. This one is April 2024. Oh, there we go. And I need to check this one, May, 20, May, May or June, can't see, May 2024, if I'm saying it wrong, somebody's going to have to help me out. So I've got three, and the ones at school probably soon expire, so I need to make sure that if they expire, I can give them two of these. This should be in date as well. No, sir, this expire, cock of fat. <laughs> this, e <laughs> this expire 2022, <laughs> December 2022. That's for the bin. Let's keep these in a box so that we know what they are. So these are the EpiPens. Now, if you have never, if you don't know what an EpiPen is, it's an injection. So... If she's having a reaction to something, I'm no nurse, I'm no special specialist, but I've been told that if she's having an allergic reaction and like rapid swelling, possibly looking at it might be leading to an anaphylactic, I don't know, before it even gets to that, because that's when the throat swells up and when you, the breathing is cut off. You have to um, give this, I don't even, oh, you just take it out like this and you go and stab it. And that gives you one quick shot. It's like a little mosquito bite, I could they say it feels like. Um, and watch watch for half an hour, ring the ambulance, all of this. And if they if she needs it, then you give her a second one. And that gives her the medicine to stop the um to stop the allergic reaction from happening. Her skin now. This I've been I've been I was told to use Aveeno. When she was younger, she used to use Aveeno. But at some point I had stopped. Everybody was still saying to use Aveeno, Aveeno, Aveeno. This one I've bought, this is quite new. When I've asked for Aveeno, they didn't want to prescribe Aveeno, uh, but they prescribed this instead. Aproderm, which is they say it's the same thing as a um Aveeno. It's just that the brand is different. So, a v, so this says oat cream and this says with soothing triple oat complex and shea butter. So this doesn't say shea butter, but this does. Um, colloidal, colloidal oat cream and... He probably isn't going to use the same words. Oat extract, oat flavor, oat extract, shea butter, and this one. Ingredients. This sounds like more rubbish. Purified water, apricot kernel oil. I shouldn't say that. Allegedly. <laughs> Glycerin, sucrose, steroid, cetaryl, alcohol, this, that, avena, uh, avena, sativa, kernel, flour. So I think these are the um scientific names of the ingredients because there are some long words anyways i i like this as well it's quite fine what else have i got here this is a spray moisturizing spray ointment so this is similar to the epiderm i don't even have my epiderm in front of me diana's epiderm epiderm is an ointment in a tub and I've left it at school. Now, the epiderm, Diana has been bathing in epiderm since 
forever. They've always said to me, don't bother in anything else, only use Epiderm. I've started to use the Aveeno body wash or bath wash, whatever, because I wanted to introduce some kind of soap. So I've introduced a Vena one, but I still put the epiderm in the in the bath and use some of that as well to help to protect her skin. She has lots of baths, but recently I've been telling her, don't have so many baths, you're going to have more showers because I think the bath is drying out your skin. So when your skin is okay, you can have a bath. When your skin is not okay, you need to have showers so you're not soaking so much in the water. I just saw this Vaseline. This Diana has always been afraid of this going on her fingers when the skin is broken. And she says, no, mommy, it hurts, it hurts. So to be honest, I've been trying to avoid using that on her skin when it's broken. But I, I told the dermatologist and one told me before that I should still use it. She Actually, she told me that it shouldn't burn. This one today said, even if it burns, she's, I still have to use it on it because it's the only thing that will get it better. But she did recommend using Vaseline on it first and then this. And then she said to put the gloves on quickly. So Diana's in bed now and she has on some gloves. So to do this, this and this to quickly um, seal it, to quickly cover it. Now this... I was given by the dermatologist today for her face and more sensitive areas like between her legs and so on. Yeah. Um, now, another thing I need to... This I pseudo cream. I tend to use this when the skin is broken because it heals it quickly. But it doesn't... It's not that effective because it's still... Whatever is going on in our body is still going on. So it hasn't been that effective to be honest now diana's asthma so we've covered eczema skin conditions allergies her she also has asthma all these things are connected related whatever asthma <laughs> once she had a she had a bad cough and she was coughing and i'm thinking oh well and i was talking to my mom on the phone once and she said because my mom has asthma too and she said to me do you know here, Diana coughing, she need her inhaler. And I sometimes I don't even notice because Diana's always coughing certain time of year. And I gave her the inhaler, put her in the bath. She coughed, 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 but then she wouldn't stop. Like it's stuck. <laughs> and then <laughs> she couldn't breathe. She couldn't breathe. It's the first time because she's had so many coughs how i knew diana had asthma every time she had a cold or even if she didn't have a cold and she just went to doctor for a checkup they always said her chest her chest and once i went and the doctor looked at her nose and he said every time we've listened to her chest it's always there's always fluid something on her chest it's always so he thinks she's saying she's got asthma he says at her age you can't fully diagnose it but he's um, that prescribing inhalers. At first, she only had the blue one, which is the reliever. And this is the Ventolin. No, Salbutamol. <laughs> this is the Salbutamol, which she had at first. Then eventually, not long, very long after, they also prescribed the Clenil. Clenil. So this one she should have when she's um having, what does it say? One or two puffs to be inhaled up to four times a day. And then this one I think is one or two times, one puff to be inhaled twice a day. So yeah, once I took her to the hospital. Now all this time I had these inhalers. I didn't know that I wasn't doing it correctly. So it says one or two puffs. I work in a school and before my daughter had asthma, when we had children come in, and we've done asthma training at school, we've had children come in and we know that the box says, and the parents would request that we give them their inhaler at, after playtime or something. And it would say one or two puffs. So most of us thought one puff was this. Two 
puffs. Finished. No, that is not it. Let me tell you how I found out what one puff is. When Diana was having this asthma attack, now I started to panic. Look for the inhaler, put it on her face, have the phone at my ears ringing with ambulance, texting my family, telling them what was going on. Panic, 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 panic. All around. In about two minutes. And I'm on the phone with one NHS 111. They're asking me all of these questions. How many breaths is she taking in how many seconds? I'm like, I don't know. A lot. A lot. Because <laughs> And I'm like, how oh, am I supposed to count that when I'm panicking, trying to get her dressed because she just came out of the bath and trying to put the inhaler on her face to, to try and soothe it if I can. With you on the phone asking me if she hurt, if she had rash, if she did keep her awake. And she was falling asleep. She was tired. And she's like this. And they say, don't let her fall asleep. And I'm like, Diana, wake up. Diana, wake up. Don't sleep. Don't sleep, Diana. Wake up. And she's like, oh, I'm tired. I'm like, don't sleep. Wake up. <laughs> this was in COVID time as well, you know. This was because it was here and where I'm living now. So it's probably 2020, 2021. Oh my goodness. The ambulance came. But the whole time, Diana can't breathe. I was panicking. I was panicking. They came, they put the thing on her finger. I'm not medical people. Put the thing on her finger and they're like calling numbers. They're like 92, 66, 70, 90 something. So they're checking her oxygen level and it was up, down, up, down, 50. And then they were like that. And then one of them said to the, and I'm panicking. I'm like, what are all these numbers? It can't be good because for it to be 90 something one minute and down to 60 the next minute. What? They went into, the one of them sent the other one into the ambulance, came back with the nebulizer. So this big gas chamber and put it on her face. And I could, that she was still breathing fast. <laughs> and gradually, it was a, and then they were like 90, 92, 94, 96. I don't know. Oh my goodness, that sounds positive. And then they put us in the ambulance and took us to the hospital. The hospital is literally two minutes drive away from where I live. So then she got all the medicine and whatever. And it was at this hospital visit when I was leaving, they gave me an inhaler. They gave me the, the thing over her face. They gave me the reliever and they showed me how to use it. Now, this doctor told me, everyone knows, or if you are familiar with anyone that has asthma, breathing difficulties, you know that a nebulizer stabilizes the breathing. And if you had to go on a nebulizer, then you really had some breathing problems. They showed me that this, this one is empty. I, need to, I don't even know when they're empty. Can anybody, if you're watching this video and you know anything, how do you know? I can't tell. This one sounds definitely empty. Oh, I can feel a little bit in that one. So it's actually shaking. But this one, not in our shape. My grandmother's asthma, my mama's asthma, my auntie has asthma, other people in my family has asthma. So you put that on. You have to shake it first. Put it in. Put it over your face. If he said to me, I think he said 10 puffs is equal to a nebulizer 10 puffs is not one two three four five six seven eight nine ten this is one puff so i think like about seven breaths so one puff is equivalent to about seven breaths so if this box says one or two puffs it's not one two it's one two three there's it's empty anyway And she's meant to take deep breaths. So you have to count this for about up to about six, seven. And that's one puff. 
So if your child is prescribed two puffs, that's one puff. This, I'm not going to press it again because there is actually a little bit in there and I'm not asthmatic. So press. Actually, between one puff and two puffs, you have to count to 30. So this is what the doctor did and you have to shake it again. So between every time you push it in, you have to take it out, shake it and you have to count. Count to about 30, did. One, two, three. Maybe I'm even counting too fast. Right up to 30. Then you're ready for the second one. And he talked me through it. So I did it at the hospital with Diana. That was one middle already, you know. I've taken six or seven breaths once. Press. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Now imagine that's two puffs. One puff, one puff is equivalent to about six or seven breaths. I think he said to me, when she's having an asthma attack or the breathing is very bad or for anybody, if you do 10 of the, so 10 breaths eat for 10 times, it's equivalent to a nebulizer. So in, this can work as a nebulizer. I might be mistaken with the 10 breaths, so it could probably be seven breaths eat as well, but 10 <coughs> times. So imagine... Every time you put it in, you breathe seven times, you take this out, you shake it, you count to 30, one, two, three, four, seven, 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 is coughing and it's bad i have to do that lots and lots of times and it works like magic it works like magic if you do it twice and it doesn't stop the coughing keep doing it until it stops because it works it's worked so many times with diana for me so i have to give it to her in the morning and at night and if she's coughing more and she has to have them at school as well. And she has to have this and this every day, twice a day. Plus the eczema, the skin is ongoing. <laughs> I will take bad things, make laugh. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to finish sorting all of this out. Tomorrow, she's got her last dose of oral steroids to take. Her jaw was still a bit puffy. Even her teacher said to me today, oh my, she looks like a little chipmunk. Her cheeks are, just, her cheeks are so puffy. Oh my goodness. So just any tips, any thoughts, anybody wants to share their allergy story, their eczema story, their um, asthma story any tips any medicines you've tried any natural medicines you've tried anything i'd be grateful i have to have when she's having bad breathing like i have to always have these things at home vapor rub have to have the spray up in the nose have to have the um thingy to put on her clothes Ugh um to help her breathe that's another one but they look empty need to stock up for the spring season like everything I have to have her calpol have to have her neurofen because when she gets these viruses and she gets a temperature it's the whole shebang i have to have her temperature digital temperature thing at home it's a whole being a mom you're a doctor you're a nurse you're a teacher you're a 
physician, everything. And you have to be patient to be successful with all of these things. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've educated somebody today, especially on this thing. And I think I can go into a school now to do this training because all those asthma trainings I've done at school, I did not know that one puff didn't actually mean one puff. It meant about six or seven breaths. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and tell me what you think about this video.